a very old Stuart S50 steam plant and this is part 15 modifying and fitting the water gauge. This water gauge has been a pain because none of the glass that I had including the 4mm glass that I bought from Black Gates Engineering would fit it. This is a piece of 4mm glass and you will notice that apart from cutting it to length I've rounded one end. There's a good reason for that and you'll see it later on. In a previous episode I made an adapter for the bottom fitting so it fits in the massive 5 16 by 32 threaded hole in the bottom of the boiler. But I also drilled out the entire fitting to take the 4mm glass. But all of that is a prelude to the main problem. Look at the bottom fitting, it is not straight. Whoever drilled the hole in the back head drilled the hole too close to the main boiler shell inside and this caused the drill bit to wander, so the hole in the back head is at a bit of an angle. So whatever I do, the bottom water gauge fitting is not at a perfect 90 degrees to the back head. And how did I rectify this problem? I just drilled out the bottom fitting slightly more. And that means wherever the bottom nut ends up when it's tightened, no part of the nut is touching the glass, because if it was, the pressure of the brass nut against the water gauge glass would probably crack it, when the boiler was in steam as the metal parts expand. The hole in the bottom nut now is around 5mm, so there's plenty of clearance. And in this clip I'm removing the bottom nut because I want to clean up the edge of the bottom fitting with a needle file, because there was a bit of a burr left by the drill. In order to seal properly, the top part of a water gauge fitting needs to be perfectly flat and very smooth. In this clip I'm going to show you the clearance now between the water gauge glass and the water gauge bottom nut. I will find out in the fullness of time whether this job has been successful. If it hasn't, I'll have to think again. These days the usual way to seal a water gauge glass in a water gauge is to use an o-ring, but this silicone o-ring is too big. A few years ago I ordered some lengths of silicone rubber tubing and I bought the wrong size, it's too small. But it all worked out because I normally use it for dangling components in my acid bath. I've cut a bit of this small silicone rubber tubing using a pair of scissors and now I'm pressing it onto the glass tube. And you can clearly see why I rounded the edge of the glass tube. I did this for two reasons. Anticipating putting a piece of rubber tubing on the end of it, it would have cut the rubber tubing and also it would probably have cut my fingers. Here you see the piece of silicone rubber tubing on the glass, but it's too thick. So, using my scalpel, being very careful not to score the glass, I rotate it and cut it into two pieces. Here's the fitting process in detail. Push the glass tubing through the top fitting and fit one of the pieces of silicone rubber tubing. Then fit the brass nut, and here I'm partially tightening the nut to hold it in place. The next step is to push the glass tubing down a little bit further followed by fitting the second piece of silicone rubber tubing. Once again by watching that clip you realise how important it is to round the edges of the glass. Now it's time for some Loctite 542. A viewer has asked me to give some details about Loctite products, so I'll do something at the end of this video but only with the products that I use. If you want to know about Loctite products I think Loctite's website is possibly the best place to go. In this clip I'm using Loctite 542 which is a hydraulic thread sealant on the top plug. The Loctite products that I use are anaerobic adhesives, that means when you deprive them of oxygen the adhesive cures and seals the threads. And here we go, a bit about Loctite. A viewer asked if I could produce a video feature on the types and applications of Loctite. I feel there would be insufficient content for a video owing to the fact that I only use three Loctite products. I use Loctite 603, which is a high strength retainer. I also use Loctite 542, as shown in this video, to form a hydraulic seal between the steam components of the system. The only other product that I use is Loctite 243, which is a general purpose thread locker and prevents the parts like nuts and bolts from vibrating loose. If you Google Loctite, then you will find all the information that you will ever need to know about these useful thread sealants and retainers. That's it for Loctite, that's all I know about Loctite because I only use three types. This is the generator that's going to be driven by the engine, and it's a very nice little thing, it's quite heavy, because basically it's a casting with a hole drilled through the centre and an electric motor pushed in there. Unless my eyesight has gone very wrong, I think this has been painted 
using LMS Red or Crimson Lake. But I don't want to repaint this, I just think I'm going to touch up the existing paint so it still looks old. And for this I'm going to use a tin of Phoenix Precision Paints as usual, a tin of LMS Crimson Lake Gloss Paint. This is only going to be a short sequence, it's a very simple job and anyone can do it. After I shot this clip I stirred the paint for several minutes, and now I'm carefully touching in all the damaged paintwork. The way I would normally do it is to touch in the chip parts first, only using enough paint to fill the chip parts. And after I've filled all the places where the paint is chipped, I'll leave the paint to dry for a while. As the paint starts to dry it spreads out a little bit and fills the depression caused by the chips. And once the paint starts to go tacky I quickly brush very lightly over the top. I do this fairly quickly so I don't dissolve the paint I've already applied. Then I will very lightly brush over the entire area between the edges. And I've found this to be quite a good way of painting old components. You can't see any of the chips, yet it doesn't look like it's been freshly painted. And here, for some viewers who seem to like it, is a gratuitous shot of the paint drying. Try not to get too excited. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.